Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Unfound Podcast channel on YouTube. I am, of course, Unfound's host, Ed Denzel. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. Before I get started into this map analysis of the disappearance of Jason Landry, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel if you are not yet a subscriber. Maybe thinking about supporting Unfound by hitting the join button below, or you can go to patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast to do that as well. I would appreciate it. So Jason Landry, we have a lot to talk about in this map analysis. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you where Luling is in comparison to San Marcos and Houston. Then going to do a street view of what Jason would have seen. Of course, all of the street views are during the day, so we can only imagine what it was like at night, which I think we would have to take for granted it would be a lot, lot tougher driving conditions. And then um, we're going to take a look at that road that he was on, and then I think we're going to go back to a satellite view, yeah, like you're looking at right now, to look at the surrounding area, and I'll have some further thoughts. So allow me first to zoom out. For me to show you right there, by the way, in the middle of the screen is Luling, Texas. I think when I originally did the Unfound Now uh, in January of 2021, I think I called it Lulling. That's just how far uh, I've come. I now know how to pronounce the name of the town. But San Marcos is up here to the northwest of Luling. You'll see it right there. That is where uh, Jason was. And I think already we can see that you know, Luling's not right down the street. It's about 20 miles away. So we have to keep in mind that, uh, let's just say he averaged 60 miles an hour. That's uh, a 20-minute drive. So he had been on the road for at least a little while before uh, this all happened. So San Marcos is up here to the northwest of Luling, and there is Luling right there. And then he was going to generally the Houston area. And the plan was for him to come down to Luling, make a right, come down here to the I-10, and go east the whole way over to Houston. That is that area right there. And we know somewhere in there things went wrong, and that's what I'm going to talk about next. So he was about 20 minutes into a two-and-a-half-hour drive, so he still had two hours approximately to go to get to his parents' place in the Houston area. And by the way, before I go any uh, further, I want to thank uh, Assistant Cherie. Of course, many of you know her as the moderator of the live show. She went way above the call of duty as an assistant. She actually drove out to Luling. She does live in Texas. I'm not going to say where. But she actually drove out to Luling and made some videos and took some pictures they are now posted in the discussion group on Facebook and on the page on Facebook. I have not yet put them on the website, though, but look for them there if you are not a Facebook user. Thank you, Cherie. So I'm going to zoom back in here, and now we're going to go street view. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go right to the intersection. I'm going to go about a mile to the west, and we're just going to take a little drive into Luling from out here. Okay? So this is it. We are facing Luling right now, and I want you to just pay attention. Of course, we have to remember, this would have been at night. So I'm just going to go down here, and I want you to pay close attention. What I'm going to do is it really doesn't matter what the date is, but I want to make sure that we stay on the... Uh, correct side of the road. Some of these Google Maps, you're on the wrong side of the road because the car is going the other way. I want to make sure that we stay on the, the exact side of the road that, of course, Jason would have been on the United States. We drive on the right side of the road. All right, so this is from 2018. I think this will uh, serve our purposes just fine. So um, I thought it was 2018. I changed it to 2018. And... There you go. That'll be fine. So we're going down here, and I want you to pay attention to the signs. So remember, we are going toward Lurling. This is the exact road Jason would have been on. Going down here. Uh, now it's switching over. Switch back. It's funny how these 
pictures kind of go back and forth. But we're... Um, Following this red pickup truck, this is a November of 2018, so this is like two years before Jason went missing. We're going down here, and you're not seeing any signs at all that to get from here to the I-10, which is to the right, it's south of where we are right at this second, there are no signs telling you that at the next intersection, the next big intersection with a stoplight that you have to turn right. None. And that's the way it is to this day. I've even done a 2022, looked at the uh, the picture of 2022. It's the same thing. The reason I'm not using the uh, November of 22 version is because we're on the wrong side of the road. It, the car, the, the Google car was coming this way instead of going uh, the way I want to go. It doesn't really matter. So once again, we're going down here. We're coming into Luling. No sign saying that you need to turn right to get to the I-10. None. Zero. We're still coming into town. Coming into town, coming into town. We're almost uh, to where we need to get to go. But I just want to show you this. I know this is a little laborious, but I think that it... Uh, it illustrates uh, something in video and pictures that cannot be totally explained in the interview that I did with Kent, even though he's been there many times and I've done this before. You really have to see it for yourself to understand what we're talking about. See, it says Junction 183, uh, but it doesn't say turn right. There's no sign saying I-10, you have to turn right to get to the I-10. So we're coming up to this what we might call the fateful intersection. And so we have this sign here that says Lockhart to the right, Gonzalez and Nixon, or Lockhart to the left, Gonzalez and Nixon to the right, but nothing about the I-10. You have to keep in mind, the I-10 is only a couple miles to the right. It's not far away at all. Still nothing. So we keep moving up, and you have this little sign right there that says something turn right, but it is certainly not um, turn right to go to I-10. We'll get this updated again. Okay. So here we are at the intersection where Jason was supposed to make a right. Now, I realize he has his GPS, he has his Waze app, an app that I am very familiar with. I've been using it. I even remember getting it. Uh, disc golf friend, disc golfer friend of mine, Brandon Langston from Orlando, said that he started using it on Facebook, and I was like, well, "What's that?" And I've had it ever since. It's like been ten years, so I'm very familiar with this app. And I realize how it can go into the background when you get certain messages. That certainly does happen, and especially if you use Spotify music on your phone at the same time, that does happen. But once again, no sign saying to the right is the I-10. Major highway in the United States, if you don't know, going east and west across the United States. It goes the whole way from San Diego in California, the whole way to Jacksonville in Florida. Whole way across the United States. We have four of them. I-10, I-40, I-70, I-80 going from south to north. And I've been on all of them. However, where is the sign then to turn right? Well, this is something that Kent and I uh, talked about, but I don't know how, if we were surely accurate, I don't know if we, you know, if everybody understood it though. The sign to turn right to go to the I-10 is, as I, we stated in the interview, is across the street. It's right there. It's right there. See it right here? I'll zoom in on it. So the sign to turn right is after the intersection. Totally counterintuitive uh, to how we think about signs when we are driving or do signs for anything that, you know, you're in like a big building, you know, the, the signs to turn right or left in a hallway are before you get to the next hallway, not after. I mean, what's the point then? But that is how this sign is 
this uh, intersection is signed, and it's still this way to this day in March of 2023. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me why some civil engineer came up with this. I have no idea. So I think what I'm saying is, of course, we talked about maybe Jason might have been on something while he was driving. I don't know if that even matters. Because if his ways did go out at just the most inopportune time, very unlucky, and he's looked fumbling his phone, as we've all done, and if this light here was green, move the, here we go, this light was green when he got to it, then he just probably would have gone right through that intersection and not even noticed that sign. But even so, once again, if he was totally sober, just clear as headed as, uh, as can be, if his ways did go out for whatever reason, and I do realize that Waze does, does mess up sometimes, it is not a perfect app, I've had problems with it myself over the years. It's certainly conceivable that Jason went through this in intersection not knowing where, he, you know, not totally understanding everything that was going on. It's dark. Might have been out there by himself, not many other cars. And saw this sign and was thinking, oh, I don't turn right until somewhere down the street. You could logically think that. That is not a crazy thought. To think that, okay, I'm driving here. Okay, I see the sign over here, so I don't make the right here. I must make the right somewhere down the street here. That is not crazy thought. In fact, I'm going to guess that there are other people who have made this mistake at this intersection over the years. With GPS, without GPS. And we also have to realize that it would certainly be confusing... This sign's way across the street. Well, what happens if you're not the first car at the light as you're stopped here, but like the second or third or fourth? I'm not sure that happened that night, but you could see how this could get really confusing. We're looking for a sign to turn right, and we're not seeing anything. What would you probably do? You'd probably just keep going straight. Makes all the sense in the world. So that's the intersection. That is what Kent and I uh, were trying to explain. So let me just back up. And as, I, as, I shown, as I've shown... There is no sign about I-10 coming up to this intersection at all. There are signs to go to certain towns. I guess that's for locals. But if you are a tourist or somebody and you don't have GPS or, you know, your cell phone's not working, whatever else, this intersection could get pretty complex and misunderstood pretty fast given how it, how, why they've done this. Why they've done this, I don't know. So seemingly, Jason went, and get, went straight. Now, what now, though, is hard to understand uh, are two points. And in fact, uh, when Cherie went and looked at, at this area, what was it, yesterday or the day before, that um, she pointed one of them out. Uh, I'll get to that one second, given that she was there. I've not been here. But what then is hard to understand is that given that Jason had driven this route before, you, you'd think he would have known, well, I have to turn right at some point. I think he had to know that the 10 was that direction, which would be south. Instead, he kept going down the street. Once again, night, uh, you know, no street lights out in the middle of nowhere. No offense to all the lulling people. But he gets down here and he comes to this section. Now, keep in mind, there is a stop sign here. So this would have given him, if he was following all traffic laws, an opportunity to stop and think. Okay, I'm here. I'm at this intersection. I know that. The I-10 is to the south. Not sure what's going on here. This road doesn't even go straight ahead. It goes off at an angle. I surely don't want to turn left. Stop sign would have given him a time to think for a moment. And of the choices that he made, he went that direction. 
he went where this white truck car is going. That's and that's where uh, I'm going to go. So what's hard to understand is even if he did see the I-10 sign, why didn't he make a right here? Now, I don't know technically if that road eventually takes you to the I-10. I suppose it does eventually. Not the most efficient route. That's hard to understand. On one hand, I can understand him getting confused at the intersection. But on the other hand, I'm thinking had made this trip three times before, as Ken had stated, or maybe this was his third trip, but at least a few times before this, would he have not instinctually have known, you know what, there's something going on here. I know I'm supposed to turn right, but now I'm at this intersection, and I got this road that I'm on, and it wants to go, like, diagonally to the left, like at, uh, what angle is that? This would be 90 degrees. That would be like uh, a 135 degree angle. And that doesn't seem right. And there's a house in front of me and there's this stop sign. What am I doing here? Doesn't seem he did that. Like he did that. It seems logically would have made a right. Surely that's still not kind of the right direction, but at least it's going toward the I-10. Instead he went over here. So this is hard to understand. So he went this direction and you can see there, it kind of just looks at least a little bit like when he was coming into town on the other side of Luling. We are now going in a Northeast direction, just about directly away from the I-10 of where he wanted to go. Now granted, um, we don't want to go over there. We want to go over here. Um, it's still paved, but the road is getting narrower and in less cared condition by the second. Okay, here was uh, here's where the new part starts uh, to correct the video from before. And that uh, mistake I made on the past video, the first video I made, uh, all my fault. Still not sure what... what happened did i put in 230 instead of 2300 as far as the block where his car was found i'm not sure but it's my fault so to continue what i was saying from part one uh the first video look at this road going out here certainly does not look like the road coming into luling and you would think that this would tip Jason off to something, but we have to remember it was dark. Who knows how fast he was driving? What condition were the headlights on his car? A lot of, lot of things going on uh, here. In addition, we have to take into consideration what mindset was Jason in at this point. I also have to remember that the video or the picture you're looking at right now is from June of 2022. This will become important uh, a little later, but... The farther we go, this road is not getting any better. Uh, not quite gravel yet, but now we're starting to see a big change in here. Not quite single lane, but uh, certainly getting closer to that. And we are going northwest out of town, and there's a cemetery on the left. And so I think you get an idea of what this area looks like. Not a two-lane road like when he was coming into town from the west. No painted line in the center. Maybe there was one at one time. I don't know if we can see it or not. I don't know if there was one there or not. But certainly not one that's easy to see now. And this is a video from June of 2022. So this video was done or this uh, street view was done after Jason went missing. All right. So I think you get a good idea for this. So I'm going to go back to the satellite view. And we're just gonna go right up here. Now, originally I had the wreck site uh, is somewhere in this area, which was wrong. My fault, don't know what happened, it did. No one to blame but myself. The actual wreck site, and Given that uh, I'm making this correction, this actually gives me a little bit more to talk about. Like, we need any more of that. But the actual wreck site 
is actually in this area right here. And in fact, it's like twice as far from town than, than what I thought, maybe even a little farther than that. So, and we're going to be able to zoom down into that, although there is a section in here where I cannot do a street view. In fact, it's a fairly important part of what I want to show you. Uh, something that I didn't, couldn't show you the last time because I didn't, th it, I didn't believe it, no, it was relevant at the time. But if we are to believe that, that Jason was driving, he would have been coming up this road right here. Now, what you see right here, this little, you I mean, might call it a chicane. And that comes from like Formula One racing. If you ever watched Monaco or anywhere, they, uh, the rules officials put little kinks and straightaways to slow the cars down because they get going too fast. It can be dangerous. So they'll put these little kinks and they call them chicanes in here. And that's what it looks like. It looks like this road should just go straight, nice and flow from right through here. Nope. It goes up here and then actually goes in a southeast direction and turns and then goes uh, you know, north, uh, again. Now, what's interesting is that Jason seemingly, if he was driving, he made it through that turn just fine. And surely this right here is more dangerous than what I'm going to show you in a few moments as to where he actually wrecked, where the car hit the fence. That he got through this kink in the road I think should tell us that he was in decent, uh, of a decent mind. Now, unfortunately, I can't go down there. You'll see I try to put the little orange guy there. It stops right before I get to that point. You see this little blue line there? It will not allow me to drop in there to see how really, how, um, you know, what that that turn, those that those couple turns look like, unfortunately. But it seems that he came up here and managed to get through here just fine. This would fly in the face of the idea that he was going so fast and he was out of control, because if he was going so fast on this gravel road, if there was ever a place he was going to wreck, it would have been right there, surely. I mean, it, it just you can look at it, it even looks weird. Even you can imagine a lot of sober people going the speed limit just maybe not paying attention, you know, being a wreck there. I don't even know why that exists. I'm guessing there's some sort of property. Somebody didn't want to want to, didn't want to cut the road off or wanted them to go around something. I don't know. It just looks weird. But he made it through there somehow. And the wreck site is up here. Right in there. And to show you... Uh, we talked about this house. You can see video of it, uh, a variety of places. This kind of, uh, was it at a winter camp or hunting camp or something they talked about that you can see a video of the police going up there and, you know, checking it out. Could uh, Jason have gone over there to hide out or rest or take shelter or something? It's right there. This is that house right there. And so uh, looking at the way I do now is that that is a place that Jason would have passed. Once again, if he was driving, I realize there are people out there who don't. And that's fine. I'm not here to argue that point. But it seems this car went by that spot and then ended up wrecked right here. Now I can go down, and if you want to see a street view of that, we can do that. Drop you in there. And you can see, I mean, this is though, we have to keep in mind, this is from May of 2011. This is uh, almost 13 years ago. So, he's going down here. Do you have these little roads that go off to each side? And just notice how you can compare this to how uh, my assistant, what it looks like, Sheree, and I'm going to get into that in a moment. But to zoom in on, you have to keep in mind, this satellite view is a lot newer than the street view. So there's that house. I'm going to drop it. 
right there. And there it is. You can see it right there. They went and checked that out. Of course, did not find anything there. Uh, if Jason made it back to the, if he was driving, he was in the wreck. He would have had to have back um, backtracked on foot to make it to this location. So going up to the actual wreck site, and we must be open to the idea, we have a couple, we have a lake here. We have a lake over here. I'm not sure which one of those restrained me. Maybe neither, maybe it was uh, another one. But those are a couple of the close ones. We even have one up there as well. All I know is for sure not all of them were drained, but one near the wreck site was drained. So now I'm going to drop you in on right about here so we can see it. We have to remember this all happened at night. Here, here he, the car is coming around this turn, round, around, around. Not the tightest of turns. And somewhere right in here is where the car ended up. Now, this, this picture is a little deceiving. Um, we have to remember this is 2011, this picture. Whereas this happened in December of 2020. And if you saw the video that my assistant Sheree did, this is not what it looks like there now. Uh, the fact is, you know, of course it might make a difference that this was done in May of 2011. She did that video in March of 2020. March, May, could there be a difference as far as the greenness and things growing? Certainly. But we're going to notice now is that this is really nice grass and the brush line is much farther back from the road than in this picture. I don't think it's an optical illusion. I think she was doing it with her Viphone. I do not think it's an optical illusion. Um, but in that picture that she did, this is way pushed back from here. I wouldn't say twice as far, but at least 50% farther pushed back. In addition, you're gonna notice that in the, the video that's on uh, our website, theunfoundpodcast.com, uh, on um, in the group on the page where I posted all of it, that it's much thicker than this is now. And in fact, you can see there's little trees if you go down here. Somebody it looked like was planting trees. Somebody moved this fence back at some point. You can see the fence posts. At some point, this all got pushed back for whatever reason. But you can see there's these little trees and everything. Did they get taken out? Did they get rooted out? I don't know. But if you watch the video, you're going to be able to tell very quickly. Uh, it's just different. It's just different. So keep that in mind. So I don't want you to get the idea they came off and man, and the fence is right there. It's really not. And, you know, I've been through here trying to figure out which one of these trees he hit, but it very well could have been one of these trees that's just little and maybe there's new ones that were planted. It's just so hard to tell. This is out wild. I don't know what's going on out here, uh, but it's certainly not the same. But this is right in the area. So could he have, uh, going back this direction, come around this turn... And lost control for some reason? Sure. It's just hard to understand what would have caused that, being that he got through that very, you know, sharper, a lot sharper couple turns just a minute before. Maybe he thought, man, I'm losing time because of that. But it, it's just hard to understand. I mean, at some point he had to realize, you know, something's not right here. I just, it's just hard to say. Once again, if he was driving, if you believe somebody else was driving, then you can certainly do that. I'm not telling you what to think. Uh, but we can't deny the car ended up against this side of the road, facing this direction, facing uh, the camera. Now, what's also interesting is he was very close, as you'll see this road. It doesn't necessarily come to a T, but it does come to another turn right here, and then he went out and make a 90 degree turn. 
but he just never got there. But what you see in that street view is not how it looks today. Why that all got changed over the years, I don't know. Uh, looking at the surrounding area, certainly not easy to search. Certainly had locations that we thought might have been easy and we need to, I'll just mark it approximately where the wreck was right there. Uh, certainly easier to search the way it looks from like Jacob Paddock Weeks who went out missing in the mountains of Colorado, wrecked his vehicle and ran off. Although there are some people who believe maybe he wasn't driving either. Somebody ran off and jumped over a guardrail never to be seen again. And that area with mountainous terrain, very steep. I mean, nothing out there. Uh, more difficult to search than this area, but I'm sure we can find a couple uh, disappearances from Unfound that probably are easier to search than this area. But I think you could un understand on one hand that if Jason was running, then he could have gone in any direction. Uh, I think on the other hand, given that there are these little houses and little buildings and oil, uh, what are they called? Derricks, you know, things going up and down. If you were to really take a look at this, there's a lot of little what you might call nooks and crannies in here. There's, of course, a lot of nature out there. But there are some uh, man-made nooks and crannies out in this area as well, which sometimes can make searches a lot tougher. But, but I can assure you, going down to a street view again, allow me to do that. Let's do that again. Zoom out. Looking around here a little bit for something. Okay. But going down on street view again, you know, we got these little, you know, we got these. And I'm gonna guess there's still, you got these things that are just kind of sitting there. Look, granted this is 13 years ago, but has anybody gone out and gotten them? I don't know. It just seems to me that although they've pushed the area back, you watch Shree's video, in some ways it actually looks wilder. But then when you get back once again to this street view, or the satellite view, There's a lot of flat plains in there too, these areas. It just seems to be in this area right in here where the wreck was that just a little thicker brush in that particular area than in some others along the road. But we got uh, these little creeks and streams and um, You know, it's hard. It's a lot of po different possibilities here. On top of the fact that uh, maybe it wasn't him in the car. And you know, given looking at this once again, if you want to think about uh, foul play, this road is so narrow. You could see two cars coming at night toward each other. And did Jason get run off the road, and the other car kept going? Certainly possible. Could have been a drunk driver. Maybe Jason's in the clearest mind he's ever been in. You have a drunk driver coming the, the, entire, the other way in the middle of the road. Jason swerves, and that's what happens. There are no facts to dispute that, especially considering how narrow this road is. It's conceivable. So that is the new addendum starting about, what, the 17-minute mark of this video. Uh, like I said, I don't know why I got the first wreck area wrong. I think I must have just typed something wrong into here. Uh, 
because I thought I had planned it out pretty well. Obviously, I was wrong. So just to um, show you what the difference was, is that originally I had him wrecking in this area right here, when really he wrecked much farther away We'll show you here in a second. I had him wrecking right in this area right here. And whereas he really wrecked up in this area, like twice as far away from town. Once again, I apologize for this. And um, just uh, got that wrong and I apologize. I'm gonna try to fix it. I'm trying to fix it as fast as I could. And uh, thank you for watching.